Harboring feelings of hate or dislike towards your pump or pumping is actually quite a bit more common than you think, but it doesn't have to be that way. And anytime I hear someone say that they hate pumping or they dread it or the sound just like makes their skin crawl, I, it hurts me inside. So let's today talk about some ways that you can enjoy pumping a little bit more. Now, I don't think I can promise that this will be something that you love, especially if you really hate it at the moment, but it can be an enjoyable process. And there are plenty of people out there that actually do enjoy pumping and can find some joy in the parts of it. So I have about 11 suggestions for you on how to not hate pumping. Let's see if any stick out to you. If you're new to the channel and you'll be pumping quite a bit, please subscribe so you can keep getting videos. We put out videos every week and they're all focused on pumping pump reviews, uh, pumping tips, all of these things to help make your pumping journey easier. If you want a step-by-step -step guide and some more in-depth help on making this easier or troubleshooting your unique situation, you can schedule a call with my team to join our Pumping for Working Moms program if that's something that resonates with you. Now that you're all subscribed and ready to go, let's dive into this list of 11 things to help you hate pumping less. Number one is one of my favorites. There's a lot of peace in knowledge. And what I mean by this is I talk to a lot of moms all the time and work with them closely. And what I found is the, one of the most common things I hear when we're talking to someone who's th maybe thinking about joining our program or needs some help is I'm not sure that I'm doing this correctly. I don't, I'm just kind of making it up. I put it on, I push play. It didn't really work like I thought it would. So now I'm just kind of guessing. And even if I am doing it right, I just, I'm not sure. And there really is a lot of peace that comes in knowing that you're doing it correctly, that you have it set up the way it needs to be. And pumping is so much more than just the logistics of putting on a pump and hitting start. There's a lot that goes into it. And I found that the people that enjoy pumping the most are actually confident that they're pumping correctly. That makes a really big difference. So really mastering those basics is the best first place to start. Okay, number two is to be efficient. The less time you can spend pumping, the happier your life will be. <laughs> So when you are a lactating mom and pumping is part of your journey, you have to pump a lot, right? We have to pump frequently to maintain our milk supply, but doing it efficiently can save you time. And the less time you're spending doing a task that you don't particularly enjoy, the better. So really making sure that we are pumping efficiently, meaning that we are emptying the breast in a reasonable amount of time ideally the shortest amount of time possible. But to do that, you have to be able to get quick letdowns, be able to know what triggers those for you, what works best, what your milk supply can tolerate in terms of how long you can go between pumps. And this kind of varies a little bit with everybody, but pumping efficiently, again, can just leave more room for the things that you actually do enjoy in your life. Number three, I also love this one, and this is combining pumping with other goals that you may have. So anytime you can pair a task that you don't really like with something that you maybe do like a little bit more, or that's like been on your list and you want to do anyway, it can make the disliked one just feel better slash maybe you can just ignore it and focus on something that you do. So some examples here would be maybe you've always wanted to learn a language. So whenever you sit down to pump, that's your time to pull out your phone and do a quick lesson in Spanish, Italian, French, Portuguese, Chinese, whatever you've been trying to learn. Um, that's something that I actually really enjoy doing. Maybe it's been on your list that you want to read more books. So every time you sit down to pump, you do 10, 15, 20 minutes in your book because that's something that you find a lot of joy in. Maybe you are an extrovert and you miss connecting with family and friends. So maybe every time you sit down to pump is your time to text somebody or call somebody or just connect with other people because that's what brings you energy in life and joy. If you're not an extrovert, maybe meditation is more your jam. And this is the time where you want to practice some skills of meditation. This is a great way also to <laughs> enhance your letdowns. And we have some more videos on on letdowns, which is a really important part of pumping. I'll put those up top and in the description for you. But maybe this is a good time for you to learn that skill that you've wanted to, or anything, anything that just you can pair with it to make it more enjoyable. This can be considered you time. And I know that you do have to pump. And as a mother, you're just giving everything of yourself all day long. But what can you do for you that might make this a little less distasteful in the moment? Number four goes right along with that, which is using this time for self-care. So I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with a 
breastfeeding mom and they're telling me all this stuff. Their milk supply is a little low. They're exhausted. Their baby's fuzzy and blah, blah, blah. And be like, what did you eat today? And it's 2 p.m. And they're like, mm, I don't think I've eaten yet, you know? <laughs> And this is such a classic thing because mothers are so selfless and you're caring for this newborn infant. And especially if you're a working mom, you have a career too. There's just a lot to manage. So pairing pumping with this is the time where I always get a drink and I always get a snack. I don't care if you're snacking every three hours, every time you pump, it doesn't have to be garbage, although it can if that's what all you can do. I mean, we eat what we eat, but this can be a really good time to just incorporate a little self-care. You're going to feel better about yourself when you're hydrated and fed. And if we can just pair that with pumping as a good reminder to take care of yourself, you might find a little more joy in the process. <gasps> Number five. Oh, okay. You can have fun with the data. So I don't know if you are a nerd like me, but I really love spreadsheets and I love data and I love graphs and <laughs> things like that. A lot of you that are on this channel also enjoy those things because we talk about that a lot, especially in relation to breast pumps and pumping. But there can be a lot of stress in analyzing the data, but there can also be a lot of fun, especially if you have built that foundation of pumping correctly so that you kind of know and understand what things affect you the most. If you do have a dip in supply, how do we get that back? Really knowing that you're pumping correctly, and then you can kind of find some joy in the data. Like how much time was I able to reduce my pumping times by a minute today and still get the same output? Maybe I snuck in an extra session and got some extra output and kind of got to see that there. This can be a slippery slope because data and analyzing it can really cause a lot of stress too. So you really have to find the the balance there for you. If tracking and seeing all those numbers is too stressful, we don't we don't recommend doing that, but I really found a lot of joy in just kind of tracking and knowing and kind of being a detective, you know. Oh, it was a little bit lower today. What did I do differently today? You know, oh, I I don't think I drank a sip of water all day. I wonder if that affects me, you know. Really having that curiosity and detective mindset can be really fun. I remember there was a a mother in my program a while back who she was tracking on her sheet because we were troubleshooting some stuff together and uh, we figured some stuff out. She was doing really well. And I said, okay, well, you don't necessarily keep have to keep tracking your milk if you don't want to. And she said, I'm going to because I really love looking at the, the data. And I also really love having someone else that really loves looking at my data too. <laughs> that was so cool uh, because I do. I love just analyzing that and celebrating little wins and just kind of like nitpicking. Oh, it's, it's just fun for me. So anyway, um, having some fun with the data if that resonates with you. Number six, this is an important one and that is to smile. And I know that sounds dumb, but there has been some evidence that forcing a smile can still bring a boost to your mood and happiness level. So even if you're not feeling it and you are just having the worst day and pumping sucks literally. And we just, we're done taking a deep breath and forcing a smile, even if it's a passive aggressive smile, because we don't want to be here doing what we're doing. <laughs> it can still help. So try and smile just with your face muscles. <laughs> okay. There are some benefits there. It may become easier as you move on. So a little tip there, but it can be meaningful, especially if you kind of incorporate that practice into your life. I'm going to sit down, put the pump on, turn it on while I'm waiting for a letdown. <sighs> I'm going to smile. Even if it's fake, you might be surprised. Number seven is to find a support community. This is huge and community can look different to anyone. It could be an online community, um, maybe a Facebook group or an Instagram page that you love. Um, we have a private community inside of our program, which is very specific for working moms, troubleshooting pumping, which is a really fun place to be. It could also be a group of coworkers or some friend, other mom friends that are doing something similar to you. It could be a faith group. It could be, I don't know, anything. Who are your people that are supporting you, that you can talk to, that you can vent to when you have a bad day that you can celebrate wins with. You need a community. If you're trying to do this alone, no wonder it sucks. <laughs> it just, it's so hard. We are humans and we're not meant to live life alone. So this also applies when you are building a community. So find your people wherever that is. Uh, if you're a working mom and you want to come join our community, that's great. I'm here. I'd love to be your friend, <laughs> but find whoever it is that can support you in this. Do not do this alone. That is the fastest way to hate it and to run yourself into burnout. Number eight is to have realistic expectations. I see this actually quite a bit 
where mothers kind of come in thinking that they're failing at everything. They're only making barely enough for their baby. They're not putting anything in the freezer or maybe it's a little bit low and they're having to supplement a little bit and that's frustrating. Or maybe they have an oversupply. We see that fairly often as well. And still just like always feeling like you're not doing enough. Like my baby's going to start eating more. And what am I going to do when that happens? Well, guess what? If they're eating breast milk, it may not happen (laughs) because their needs don't necessarily continue onward as they get older. Like, like we do see with formula fed babies and social media plays both a wonderful and a potentially harmful role in this because people like to post their accomplishments and why wouldn't they, they had a great day with great milk output and they're very proud of that. And you should share that, but sometimes that's all we see. So if you're in the camp of really struggling or not having enough milk or feeling like it's just not working and you see these four or five ounce bottles on there and you're like, why am I only pumping two or three ounces? Like that might actually be a very realistic expectation. But so just take into account that what you see may not be actual real life or someone with an oversupply with 2000 ounces in their freezer. That's great for them. They have challenges too. And it just, I don't know, having realistic expectations. What does realistic actually look like? And not just the average of what it is, but for you, what are your realistic expectations? What can you expect your breasts to do based on your history and what you have going on in your life, comparing yourself to others and comparing yourself to this ideal in your mind of perfection is a really fast way to hate what you're doing. So find a way to have some realistic expectations to adjust goals if needed. And if you need some help doing that, get a professional to help you work through that. Okay. Number nine, we're getting through this list. (laughs) We're having some good ideas on how to enjoy pumping. Number nine is to find a mindset of gratitude. And I know this is easier said than done, but I just wanted to read a little snippet from a Harvard Health Research article that said, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. And I agree 1000% with this statement. Although it is not always easy to do when you are stuck in the messy middle of pumping and feeding and working and all of these things that you've got going on, it's really hard to find the things you're grateful for. And it may seem like a wasted practice, but I can tell you from experience and from working with a lot of moms doing this, that it matters how you feel about this experience. You can drag your tired, broken body and mind across the finish line of your goal but you will not look back on this with positive emotions. You may have some resentment toward the experience or even towards your baby or towards your job or towards your partner. And just because you were able to hit your milk ounces or your time goal, if you felt crappy about it and you were like burnt out and struggling, that's almost not a success in my opinion. Like I'm really happy that you gave breast milk to your baby and hit your goal. But if you hated every second of it and you burned relationships and you know, a partner's like, we are not having more kids. I am never watching you go through that again. You know, that's not a positive thing. And I want more for you. I want you not only to meet your goals, but I want you to feel really good about it. And when we have to adjust goals or adjust expectations, I want you to have the choice. What I hate to see the most is when mothers are forced to end earlier than they wanted because something was out of their control. That's something that I focus a lot on is not only the logistics of pumping, which are important. We have to make sure we're doing things correctly, but we also have to find joy and gratitude, not only in the pumping journey, but in the life that's happening around that. So finding little moments to, to find some gratitude of what is going wrong or what is going right right now. I am grateful to be able to give 15 ounces of breast milk to my baby every day, even though I have to supplement the rest with formula. I am grateful that my workplace is supportive of me pumping, even if some of my coworkers are annoying about it. (laughs) I am grateful that we have technology, that we have videos like this so that I can find encouragement and, and continue on my journey. Just like little things. I know sometimes it's really hard to dig deep and find something you're grateful for but it can help make the experience better. 
Okay, number 10, we're almost there. <laughs> this is to celebrate goals and milestones. This might seem dumb, but it is really important. And we really like to share wins inside of our community and in our program because it's important and you should feel good about what you do. So whether that's with your private community that you've built, whoever that is, or with your partner or with a coworker or a friend or a community or a professional that you work with, share and celebrate goals and milestones. It can help bring back the focus, bring back like, what is my actual goal? What do I actually want here? And help you reevaluate, are we on the right track to get there? If you're not feeling like you're hitting any goals or milestones, maybe it's just because you're not looking. So try and be mindful of what you are doing right and what things are going well for you. And number 11, last but not least, is to ask for help. You are not supposed to figure this out by yourself. You're not supposed to be alone in this journey. So ask your partner, ask your boss, ask your coworkers, ask your friends, your family, ask a professional. And if you want professional help in this journey, if you want to be able to pump fast and efficiently with a calm confidence to be able to meet the other goals that you have in your life, I know your life is not just about pumping, right? If you want some help with that, let me know. This is what I specialize in. We have a signature program called Pumping for Working Moms, where we work closely with moms to help them pump correctly and become their own detectives and to find the support in the community and from professionals that they're looking for. If that, again, if that sounds great, there's a link down to chat with us, but ask for help wherever in your life you can. You're not meant to do this alone and it's not supposed to suck. Technically, pumping is supposed to suck. but it's, it can be enjoyable. And I encourage you to find ways to make that happen for you. Please comment below on this video and let me know if any of those resonated with you or if any of them didn't. It's always good to have feedback and everyone is so different. I love getting to meet and interact with more people. So I'll put another video up top here that I think you'll enjoy as well. And we'll see you on the next video. Happy pumping.